Hi there, my name is Sam Jones and I am the gallery manager at the Aurora Cultural Center. On behalf of the staff and the board of directors, we are pleased to present Upon Reflection, Portraits of Personal History, a group exhibition featuring Nicole Crozier, Eden Graham, and Junie Kim. In this Art Bite, I'm meeting with Nicole Crozier, a Toronto-based artist and arts manager. Her larger-than-life photo collages from the series Strip Fit can be found flanking the east wall of the Aurora Town Hall gallery space. Nicole Crozier is interested in fashion and its ability to transform and masquerade the female body. Using found imagery, Crozier creates surreal, seductive compositions that ornament the human figure, often grotesquely beyond recognition. In this segment, Nicole has agreed to speak with us about her creative process and some of the underlying themes behind the compositions seen in this exhibition. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Yeah, great <laughs> to be here. Good. Um, so yeah, first, I just want to give you the platform to talk about this series, Strip Fit. Um, can you speak to some of the inspirations behind the work? Yeah, for sure. So um, I made this series, um, these six pieces that are included in the exhibition, uh, which are a part uh, back in 2018. Um, and maybe I'll just start with kind of describing how they're made, because that's one of the questions I usually get first about the pieces. Um, so uh, they're taken from, uh, they're collaged together from various fashion imagery that I find and assemble with crafting supplies and then um, light with, you know, flashlight or my phone light and then photograph and then blow up um, to a larger than life scale. Um, so most of the, the, the collages that I use to make the works that you see in the exhibition, most of them are no bigger than eight and a half by 11 in size. Um, when the largest pieces in the show are uh, 34 by 51 inches in size. So it's quite a dramatic change in scale from the original referent to the, the final piece. Um, and in terms of my inspirations when I was making the work, um, a lot of that came from just the visual um, process of, of putting different types of imagery together and seeing how they interact. You know, I was really interested in how um, the visual relationships of objects change to each other depending on, you know, what figure was paired with what background or um, what accessory was related to the figure in different ways. Um, and I loved how with, you know, taking something small and then blowing it up to be quite large, um, you know, I loved how that, you know, change in scale not only changes your relationship as the viewer to the model, but also um, how it would make the very physical quality of the images apparent. You know, you, if you go up close to the works, you can see, you know, hairs and dirt and, you know, the cut edge of a, a piece of paper that makes it really obvious to you that like, oh, like these, these are not just images, like they're physical objects, like they're physical pieces of, of paper. And I, I love how, you know, making them really large, um, take something that's really usually really easy to consume that you know like you flip through really quickly in a magazine to being this like kind of overbearing or like domineering um figure kind of looking down at you um and yeah when i'm making the work i'm i'm really interested in how you know accessories and shadows um can be used to deny access to the figure um, in my work, I, I usually, um, you know, cover the face or, or deny access through the face by like positioning a shadow over it or creating some kind of weird intrusion into um, the figure's face, which is, you know, how we relate to other people is, is through their faces. Um, so, you know, I'm really interested in how doing that kind of gives almost like a sense of agency to these objects or accessories that are usually meant to like complement the, the body and accessorize ourselves um, and how, how um, in, you know, taking them out of, out of context and, and rearranging their relationship to the figure, they become almost animate or like more alive than the figure itself. Um, yeah. And I'm, I was really interested in, you know, after I made the work, cause when I'm making the work, I'm not really, I'm not really thinking about 
the conception behind what I'm doing that much. It's really only when I step back and kind of look at what I've done across the board and across multiple pieces and kind of piece together, okay, like what's going on here? Um, and I kind of realized that I was like interfacing with this idea of um, like the fashion model as like a mannequin or um, like an armature for um, our like projected desires about the female body or the feminized body and like what what our um, expectations are from femininity or or from people who identify as femme um, and how uh, how the model kind of acts as, as an armature for us to like hang our projections about femininity on like when you look at a fashion magazine you don't really it doesn't really matter who those people are they're just kind of bodies to kind of rep a lifestyle or a persona um which I find really fascinating mm. um and I think you know socially we have like this kind of cultural entitlement to the female body you know tr traditionally femininity has been seen as something that's passive you know very accessible um that should be um available and easy to consume you know while it's also been you know pegged as something like very flamboyant and excessive and um or like childlike you know i think uh you know women's bodies are often end up you know infantilized or, or made to be childlike in some way um and you know the fashion industry is an area in which those like social narratives are played out very directly um mm -hmm because it's like about how we present ourselves to the world and how that externalizes our internal sense of self um, and how, how people read like, who are you through your clothing choices? Mm -hmm. um, and especially how people read what your, your gender is. Um, and, you know, I think I, I'm, I mean, I think this is also a personal question for me that I've been trying to figure out um, is, you know, like, how is somebody who identifies as, as femme or, you know, takes on elements of femininity in certain ways, um, you know, what, what parts of this prescribed model of, of femininity do I identify with and what parts do I reject? And um, I think that's a kind of counterbalance that a lot of people who identify as feminine find themselves within. Um, and so I think in a lot of ways, like, fashion fashion can be a double-edged sword in that way. Like it can be both really liberating, like mm -hmm. as a, a mode of self-expression, um, as well as it can kind of also be a trap, you know, where you, you over-identify with how you present to the world and you, you find yourself kind of like performing um, a persona or a certain kind of role. You kind of already touched on this, but is there something specific that you want people to take away um, in viewing your pieces? Um, yeah, um, I mean, I just hope that, you know, ideally I, I'd love for people to be entranced long enough to spend some time with the work, um, <laughs> and, you know, see where it sits with them and their gender expression. Um, you know, I, I'd love if people kind of sat with the work and, you know, see if, um, uh, if it brings up any disquiet for you, like, why is that? Um, does it make you feel uncomfortable? Does it make you feel excited you know what is, what does it make you feel um and kind of to investigate and see you know how do you interface with um different narratives that like the fashion industry perpetuates or you know certain types of personas um or how you relate to your like conception of femininity um but i'm also like you know cool if people just want to enjoy them as as physical or visual objects or experiences. So uh, John Stasiker describes collage as a medium that allows the opening up of conscious, which is very direct. It's also a way of looking at what you are consuming all the time. Uh, what role does collage play in your artistic pra practice? In, in relation to my practice, collage is really important. Um, because the images that I'm working with have a really obvious place of origin. Um, and because of that, it's really important for me to interface them as physical objects. And like, because we live in a world that is so saturated with like 
visual imagery that we're bombarded with every day. Um, I think collage is a really great way to to acknowledge that like buildup of visual imagery as like physical objects that are sitting on top of each other um, in one way, as well as, you know, also asserting that like these images that I'm using in my work are physical objects that have um, like a weight in the world. Um, so there's that kind of physical quality to collage that's really important to me. Um, and then conceptually, I think collage is a really great way to talk about bodies and, and gender and femininity because like our, our bodies, our sense of self are collages in a way. I'm like, we're, you know, we're a collection of all these different things that we've engaged with in our lives, like people that we've interacted with or like experiences that we've had. And we combine those things in a constantly evolving way over time to to become who we are. Um, and I think that's also a really interesting metaphor for gender, you know, like gender mm -hmm. is constantly, gender is not a fixed concept. We're constantly like both on the scale of what you can be from feminine to masculine, but also like within ourselves, you know, we don't just decide one day like, okay, I'm, you know, here on the Kinsey scale. I'm, you know, it's, it's constantly evolving and changing throughout our, in our lifetimes. Um, so I think collage is a really interesting way to like visualize this kind of plethora of beliefs and desires and fantasies we have about ourselves and our place in the world. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and I think obviously I can't not mention this is like, um, you know, because of these images place of origin being in fashion magazines, like they have a very strong connection to like this consumer capitalist kind of society in which we live. Um, and, um, you know, I'm really interested in asking about how, or investigating how, you know, conceptions of, of success or like happy, happiness, um, socially have become like, um, synonymous with, you know, financial wealth, physical consumption of goods, you know, living a certain lifestyle or being able to um, present a certain way, I think, especially when it comes to um, class uh, and, you know, our ability to um, actualize those certain things to be able to present as being successful in whatever way that means you know, is deeply impacted by like your background and, and your class and your race and your gender and, and, or your ability and how those things may make it easier or, or harder for you to access certain, um, elements of, of capital. Um, and I think like collage, you know, using these images that are so inherently like loaded with some of these ideas being, you know, coming from the fashion world and fashion imagery. Um, I think it's like the kind of perfect medium to interface with um, these kind of like myths of what it means to be, you know, successful as a, as a, a woman or a feminine presenting person, um, you know, by using the, um, the images that are used to perpetuate these ideas in the first place. Has it taken you anywhere else in your practice or any projects that are, that are coming from this, this collage uh, sort of work? Yeah. So um, since I made this series back in 2018, um, I actually started uh, using these kinds of collages as um, not these exact collages, but similar collages um, as references for um, paintings. So I also maintain a, a painting practice. Um, that's actually my, my main artistic practice. I'm more a painter than a photographer, I will say. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so I've started using these, um, yes, these, these collages as references for those paintings, um, which I find really interesting because again, like taking that you know, uh, reference of something that started off as a physical piece of paper, taking it out of the fashion magazine context, bringing it into a collage, and then, you know, 
lighting it, photographing it, and and removing it even further from its uh, point of origin as a photograph and then bringing it into the realm of painting. Um, so I'm kind of um, like further removing the um, the reference from its point of origin, which um, I've been finding really interesting and I'm really excited to to see where that process takes me. Awesome. I'm excited to see it too. <laughs> um, okay. So um, that's, that's it for the art bite. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us, Nicole. Um, so I'm going to include a link to Nicole's website um, in the description of this video. Uh, I really encourage anyone who's watching this uh, to check it out. There's some really interesting projects. There are some painting uh, projects that I, I was sneaking and looking at that are really good um, that everyone deserves to see. Um, and it's not exhibited with us. So it's, it's great to see, like you can see it online. Um, now upon reflection, Portraits of Personal History, it's available in person at the Aurora Town Hall Gallery from April 1st to April 23rd. Our, our virtual gallery is on our website and it's up until May 6th, 2022. Um, that link's also gonna be in the description. Um, to find out more and you can also book your in-person visit to the gallery. Mm -hmm.